James Dewey Yancey, or the name you probably know him as, Jay Dilla. Dilla is such a unique story in the book of hip hop. And trust me, I know there are already plenty of videos on YouTube talking about Jay Dilla's influence on hip hop and on him being appointed the father of lo-fi hip hop, or about him and his beloved MPC 3000 sampler. His obscure drum patterns, his refusal to quantize his beats to push towards a more human sound. All these things and more are warranted for these videos completely. I mean, you could probably make a laundry list of artists big and small that Dilla has influenced throughout the ages. Even one of the greatest artists of the 21st century, the man himself, Kanye, West has gone on record stating that he works on behalf of Dilla. All the oddities and quirks he puts into his music is what he believes is the best way of representing the greatest before him. But today I want to talk about something I haven't surprisingly seen talked about and that is his magnum opus, Donuts. It's funny to me that every time I watch a video about him they always focus on the same things and don't try to look into the greater message and story Dilla attempts to tell, one of death, love, and acceptance. Today I want to go into why this album is such a heart-wrenching listen when you understand understand the context of it all. I want to tell the story of the beautiful tragedy that is Jay Dilla's Donuts. You wake up abruptly in the middle of the night staring at the hospital ceiling. You've been vomiting all day, you have chest pain, joint pain, fatigue beyond belief, a fever for no apparent reason. And on top of all of that, you're more than aware of the amount of medical debt you and your family are in. You painfully look over to your side table where you can see bottles of pills and medication beyond belief, but reach over to grab the one thing keeping you going, your art. This, among other symptoms, scratched the surface of Dilla's time bedridden at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. Dilla had already had a history of medical issues prior, with him being diagnosed with lupus in 2001. Then in 2002, he gets diagnosed with TTP, which is an incurable blood disease. It's stated that during 2004 2005, the publications knew about Dilla's illness and even his hospitalizations for them, but they were downplayed by none other than Dilla himself. But it came to a point where Dilla himself couldn't downplay the severity of his illnesses. It got so bad that in November of 2005, he was touring Europe in a wheelchair. After that, he was essentially bedridden for the rest of his life. Now taking all of that and putting it into context, the man was able to make 29 of the 31 songs on Donuts bedridden with only a 45 RPM record player and a Boss SP sampler. He damn near made two full albums with The Shining being apparently 75% done by the time of his death. Every day for months on end, his mother and friends would be the source of the samples on his magnum opus. And believe me when I say Dilla had to have gone through who knows how many crates to make this album. Donuts alone has around 87 samples across his 31 songs. That's about three samples per song, and it wasn't just in simple ways either. Dilla wasn't just sampling soul vocals for an easy hook or whatever. This guy was so meticulous in why and how he used each sample. He was so keen on no one hearing Donuts that according to his own mother, Maureen Yancey, when she would sneak in to listen to his unfair finished album while Dilla was in dialysis, Jay became furious with his mother when he found out she was listening to him. To me, it is this action of unhumanly determination to be in so much pain that he could barely even move his own hands, and that his mother would have to be sitting bedside with him to help him work on the album by massaging his fingertips and moving his instruments to his hospital bed. Like just think about that. To be in otherworldly pain lying down there, probably knowing that your death is coming sooner than later. To not blindly accept that and to give your all into one thing you care about the most. When listening to Donuts blindly, you can tell that the whole album isn't meant to be this narratively driven piece of work. With the right context applied and really looking into certain songs and moments on the album, you can tell Dilla was pushing for certain messages in his final work. For instance, track 3, Waves. He uses the sample Johnny Don't Do It by 10cc and chops it up in a way that sounds like Johnny Do It, which is more than certainly Dilla telling his little brother John Yancey, or his stage name of Illa J, to pursue his music career. And Johnny would indeed listen to his older brother and release his debut studio album, Yancey Boys, in 2008. One of Jay 
three Dilla's most popular tracks ever. Don't Cry can be seen as Dilla directly telling his loved ones to simply not cry about his death. Besides the absolute wizardry Dilla pulls off in this song, displaying every talent and skill that made him who he is in a two minute runtime of his song, you can tell that Dilla was knowing of his near death and chose this album to tell those what he needed to say, but couldn't. Dilla was known not to be primarily a rapper and to be a producer mainly. Not to say he couldn't rap or write at all, he was just more talented at producing and Dilla knew that. So instead of using 16 bar verses or clever rhyme schemes, he chose his samples to speak for him. And to me, that is definitely harder to do by far. And then there's the saddest and my favorite song off the album, You Love. I want to play a little bit of it before diving into it. Hopefully YouTube doesn't block me for playing it. But here's a couple seconds of the already insanely short song. Now initially you probably think that just a simple love song and if anything it's more uplifting than anything. And yeah, you'd be right. But to me there's something more to it. It's just the fact that through all this agonizing pain, the realization he would lose his loved ones at such an early age for something he couldn't even prevent. To hear about his own mother having to pay 500000 a month in medical bills for his own care. Through all that he wanted to make one track that was full of so much intimate love and tenderness to those he loved the most. To still want to produce something so beautiful and simple while seeing the worst the world can offer, it's just heart-wrenching. I believe as well that while it being a tribute to his loved ones, it's also a love song aimed towards the thing he loved the most. And that being, if you haven't guessed it, sampling. I don't think there's a song that I've listened to on any album or piece of work that manages to express an emotion so well and fulfillingly in a minute runtime. It really is something only Dilla could do. Jay Dilla was and still is a pioneer in music. His ability to create any sound that just popped up in his head into reality with basically nothing but an MPC 3000 and a record player is just unbelievable. It inspires me whenever I go on GarageBand on my phone or mess around in FL Studio making the worst beat imaginable. It's the the spark that Dilla ignites in people. Donuts was released on February 7th, 2006, on Dilla's 32nd birthday. And to celebrate his peers and friends, Mad Lib, Peanut Butter Wolf, Egon, and J Rock visited his home. Dilla was ecstatic to get the album finally out on his terms and was generally energetic, according to eyewitnesses. February 10th, 2006, three days after the release of Donuts. James Dewitt Yancey died at his Los Angeles home due to cardiac arrest. There's this interaction I found while researching that I want to share in the final days of Jay Dilla between him and his mother. In the last days of his life, as he shuffled down the hallway, he had heart-to-heart -heart chats with his mother. They were quick, but they were thoughtful. You know I love you, right? He said. And I appreciate everything you've ever done for me. You don't have to say that, she said. He and his mother had developed a ritual that preceded medical procedures. They'd slap high fives, an indication that everything was going to be okay. At home, the day after his birthday, he held his hand up for his mother to meet it in midair. She was puzzled. There was no procedure that day. Why was he doing this? He continued to motion for her to high five him, refusing to stop until her hand met his. Finally, she relented and gave it to him. That's what I'm talking about. He said, we're in this together. It's all good. You're going to be all right. I promise you it's going to be all right. The name of Donuts, as many know, signifies a perfect loop of the album. I mean, the album ends on an intro and starts with an outro, hence the name. It represents the music never ending, the show to continue forever and ever. And it hasn't stopped ever since Dilla passed. The amount of artists and genres that take direct inspiration from Donuts is too many to count or name. I truly do wonder what Dilla thought while making this project, to make an album that never ends. Or maybe he just really liked Donuts.